In the last video, we talked about tropical numbers and how they are not fields. So if something fails to be a field, it doesn't, well, you don't have to think about it. That Well, this was a complete waste. Why do we care about this? Well, there are other, other sort of sets uh, th th that have different names, that have different axioms that differentiate them from each other. So, well, we talked about fields. Fields is one type of of sets because these have nine axioms we could also talk about rings rings are their own thing they are very similar to fields but they have their own axioms so these will have their own list of axioms now the one that i wanted to talk about within this video is 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 groups 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 so um you might be wondering, what if I have just a zero element? Will will this be a field? Well, in in short, no, it will not be a field. You can think about it this way. We know that our multiplicative uh, inverse axiom of fields is the following: that if you if if you give me for all a in the field, there exists. Uh, an a inverse which is also part of the field such that if you were to if you were to multiply them a times a inverse then then you would end up getting your 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 identity identity right so if w w w within this even though it might be mathematically illegal for me to do this but the easiest way for you to actually understand how i'm doing this is this so if you if you take zero so for well you only have one element this is all you have you only have one element this is all you can use for everything you can't have so your a inverse cannot look like one over a because one is not this is not an element of of the field so how how this works is well you take your zero and and then you say well th th then the inverse of of zero which we don't really know how uh, what what this is but if i was to do well think about this is well it's something well how it can be something it has to be zero and then it will be zero at the bottom because that's the point of this but we know that you can't divide anything by zero because this does not exist this operation this this thing is not existing. So will this equal? Will this equal to zero? No, it will not because this does not exist. So it's the multiplicative inverse that the, that this specific set uh, fails. However, this is indeed a group. And that's what this video is about. That if something fails to be a field, it, does, it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a complete waste. You could have, you could have it as a group. So what is a group and <clears throat> where does it work? So a group, the definition is that basically a group is a set with only one operation. And it combines two elements. And, and how we denote it is, well, let me just quickly write it. Group is basically uh, the combination of a given set, which we will call G, and one operation. And it's, it's empty from within because it's not supposed to be a multiplication sign. This could also, this could also be a plus, a plus sign. So uh, the, the four properties that this specific, um, well, groups, groups have uh, are the following so groups the first one that they have is closure so uh, the first one that they have let me use red first one that they have is is closure so I didn't talk about this in the fields video but what is closure so basically if for any given two elements which are a part of this set which we have named G um, the result when you operate both elements, the thing that you get at the end will still be in G. So uh, we, we talked about this, this symbol. This means for all, and this means there exists. Just so you know, if you haven't watched 
the previous videos of real analysis, then I would advise you to go back. And um, okay, so for all, for all A and B, which are elements of G, A operated to B, so again, that's empty from within, will also be will will this thing will reside within the set of G okay so that's what closure is if you if you uh, don't understand this then one way to think about this is well what if what if we had a room what and and I'm looking at the room from above and there was a door first the door is open so one element enters and then another element enters but just as they enter I close let me use red for this. I close the door. Now, these two elements are stuck inside, and let's call the room G. So, once, and, and let's call the elements that entered A and B. So, once A and B are in G, then inside they could operate however they wanted to. However, they would still have to be in G because they, the door is closed and, and, and that should give you a little bit, uh, well, it should give you a little bit more understanding why, why it's called closure because you are closed within the set. Now, the second property that I want to talk about, that the second axiom for groups is associativity. Associativity. So for all A, B, and C, so for all A, B, C, which are elements of G, we, well, and and the comma is just a separation of ideas. I have one here as well. You have one idea over here, and then you are talking about a different idea, yet still connected idea after the comma. So this would be that if you operate A with B, and then operate that with C, then this will be equivalent to having A operating B, which is being operated with inside the brackets with C. And you have some background and some understanding. I don't think I need to go too deep in, in associativity, so I'm just gonna move forward. The third, the third axiom that groups follow is called identity. So, and, and, and we talked about this, and that's exactly what, what the multiplicative identity is, and that's what zero fails in order to be to be a to, to be a field so you know what this is it's inverse the reason why i'm not adding additive or multiplicative is because this empty circle gives you the freedom to input the multiplication sign or if you wanted to you could use a plus sign it would make it it would make no difference in the axioms and the open circle is basically giving you the basically empty space you could replace it with a multiplication or you could replace it with a with a plus sign so the third axiom that groups follow and so the, the groups follow is the identity i so i identity identity element So there exists an E for element, just so you're not confused, which is an element of G, such that for all, for, for all A, which are elements of G, and then I use the imply, imply symbol, if we were to A, and then if we were to operate A with E, with with the end and that's supposed to be uh, open from the inside and then uh, a operating with e or actually let me yeah well okay operating with e what what would happen is well you would still contain your your original your original element i think it would be fair for me to write it the other way just so you are not confused but i think i will run out of space but i'll just copy paste it in the next slide